ATVs. You better act quickly because unlike Suzuki ATVs, these deals won't. Welcome back to Gateway International Raceway. Frank Kimmel is on pit road with the number 46. They are putting four fresh tires on this thing, and there is some sort of a problem underneath the hood. They had to push him to get him restarted here. They come back down pit road on lap 87. We'll try to follow up with crew chief Bill Kimmel and get an update. Yeah, and it was weird. It seemed like he might be, he might not have first gear. Because when he, he had it revved up and was trying to start, and it just dropped way down like he was starting in second or third gear even. Yeah, he had a, you know, he had a clutch problem last week. Won the race, overcame that clutch problem in Milwaukee and won the race. There's crew chief and brother Bill Kimmel right there. And Ray. So I'm sure we're going to hear that story yeah, here shortly. We're trying to get in position here. <laughs> Bill, can you give us an update? What's the situation? Uh, not sure. He said after the uh, red flag, it went back green. Um, it's got a miss upstairs, so I'm not really sure if we found a plug or what we did as we sat down there. Uh, was it getting any better? We checked the plug wires, things like that. Uh, that nothing. Uh, nothing seems to have helped it. So uh, he, he said it was coming and going at the end. So maybe if it runs 10, 12 more laps and gets enough heat in it, it'll clear him out a little bit. But uh, this doesn't look like it's going to be our night. So we'll keep fighting to see if we can't get the fork car back up there. Okay, so the two came down and went to the pits and put on fresh tires, and now we'll have to follow up the situation with the 46 and see if they can ride this thing out for another uh, 30 laps. Great, the good news right now, only 17 cars on the lead lap. Obviously, Frank, pitting this time, will be 17th in line. The two of Michael McDowell gave up the lead to come down pit road, and he will restart this race in the 11th position. So Michael McDowell giving up the lead, coming on to pit road, feeling that's his best option. Obviously, they were a little concerned about fuel. That would have been a long run. Maybe a lot. I would say maybe a lot concerned. <laughs> they were a lot concerned about fuel and the benefit of Frank Kimmel not running well, or potentially not running well, gave them the opportunity to come onto pit road and not have to gamble. You know, it's funny. I was talking to Frank Kimmel you know, before the race, and I said, when, do you run this race with one eye on the two or do you run this race trying to win every race he said well you know we've been in this thing a long time we've won eight championships we've run for, for points just about our entire arca remax career so we would be lying if we didn't you know if we said we didn't think about what they were doing but at the end of the day you have to run your own race and right now you're having a problem with the engine that's why frank come down pit road we knew that he probably had enough fuel to get to the end but he was backing up on the racetrack so they took a look a cursory look at plug wires to make sure they didn't have a plug wire come off try to put four tires on because he you know, might as well because he already gave up his track position so uh, they are cognizant of what Michael McDowell is doing but at the end of the day they have to do what's best for them and at the beginning of the show we talked about Mark Mitchell Josh Wise grabbing his first career pull and we thought well they're not really the story because it's going to be Michael McDowell and Frank Kimmel well all of a sudden they're back into the Forefront of the story. We've got Brian Clausen out in front, Justin Algar, Dominic Casola at 87 of Andy Lally is running fourth, and fifth is the 22 of Josh Wise. So right back up to the front. I think they always say the cream rises to the top. And remember, Josh was penalized after that accident he was involved in for pitting too soon. Mm -hmm. So he made the most recent restart from the back of the field. He's worked his way up into the top five right now, running fifth. Again, a lot of those cars that were on the lead lap came down pit road, but uh, Josh has passed some cars also. Coming out of turn four, we're about to see the green flag once again. And we've had five cautions. The green flag back in the air. We're back to racing. Two and three wide, almost on the start of this one. Ryan Clausen slow on the restart. He was leading when the green flag came out. Here comes Justin Algar to the inside. They've got the lap car of Aaron Crocker. They were just on lap herself right in front of them, side by side for the lead. Justin on the bottom, gonna be able to pull out in front of Brian Clausen to take over the lead. Justin Algar looking for another win in the Arca Remax Series. He won in his hometown of Springfield on the dirt a year ago. Looking to make it two wins in this series now. Boy, would he like to get a win on paper, too. Right here in St. Louis would be a big, big day for Justin Algar. So Algar out in front now of the 40 of Brian Clausen. Dominic Casola running in third in that number one. Andy Lowley in the 87 and rounding out the top five.
five is Josh Wise in the 22. There's Here heavy comes. traffic right there. There's Michael McDowell right up your screen in that two car. Get fresh tires on that number two as he tries to make the pass, taking positions away. He was in ninth when he went by the start finish line the last time. And he's holding on to that position now as he tries to get by that 37 of Michelle Terrio. Yeah, Brian uh, Silas right now just for a, moment, caught for a moment ago from his onboard. He's up into the fifth position right now. Those of you tuning in for NASCAR Bush Series qualifying, that's coming up next. We had a red flag condition that has slowed this one down by about 20 minutes. We have 28 laps of racing to go from Gateway. So stay tuned right here in speed for Bush qualifying following our race. Brian Silas right there. That's Andy Lally, the 87 car right behind him. They're side by side for the seventh position. That's Justin Marks and Michael McDowell. Michael McDowell gets it. Michael McDowell, he got by Justin Marks. A little smoke coming out of that 87. Andy Lally, went, they went down the front stretch. Now down the back stretch, Brian Silas just in front of Andy Lally. Silas running in the fifth position. A couple guys with some road racing experience right there. Rolex guys, Andy Lally, the 87, Michael McDowell. A regular in the Rolex series. And Michael McDowell is going to move to the inside and take over the sixth spot. That's for six. He takes it away. Now Brian Silas just in front of him. We look back for Brian Silas is on board. And McDowell hugging that white line down on the low side of the racetrack, trying to get the run on Brian Silas as they go down the backstretch. Justin Algar continues to lead. Brian Clawson running second right now. Brian had the lead on the restart, got seized up a little bit on that restart. Justin Algar was able to get by him. Close to the inside of the 11 of Brian Silas. That's fourth, fifth position. Here comes Michael McDowell. Oh, and problems. We've got the caution back out. That's the 75, Jason Hedleski. Jason was being shown one lap down. You see the damage to the left side of that Curtis Air Compressor is forward. We had just 25 laps of racing to go. The sixth caution of the night has come out. Jason's going to make his way on the pit road. Get a reminder, those of you tuning in for Bush Series qualifying, it will follow the end of this race. We sprint to the finish. Just to let you know, in the Arkham Remax Series, the past seven years, it's been dominated by Frank Kimmel winning seven series championships in a row. He's got eight to his name. But tonight, Michael McDowell making a gutsy call. Coming in later, and then all of a sudden, Frank Kimmel having issues with his car, putting this points battle right back in the forefront. Kimmel running in the 16th spot right now. Michael McDowell is sixth, and out in front of the field is the 16th of Justin Algar. Yeah, Frank Kimmel's only been able to pass one of the cars that's on the lead lap. He has not made a whole lot of progress, so he obviously is still fighting that engine issue, that miss they were talking about. Right now, Michael McDowell is making his way towards the front. He restarted in the 11th position. He's already made his way up to sixth. Was in a battle with the 11 of Brian Sellis for the fifth position when the caution flag came out. And Phil, in this situation, I mean, when we talk about big picture and Frank Kimmel, he's on the racetrack and he has an issue with the motor. If an issue took place where that motor blows, right now with 24 laps of racing to go, he could drop all the way back to 28th in this race. And if he gets a 28th place finish and Michael McDowell finishes up in the top 10, even top five where he's running close to right now, we're talking about we could have a new points leader. No, this, this point championship is far from over. There's a lot of racing to go yet in the Arca Remax Series. In addition to tonight, we've got some great races coming up in the Arca Remax Series. So this thing is, uh, is anything but over. 23 laps of racing to go. Michael McDowell currently in six, out in front of the field. Under the moonlight, it's the 16 of Justin Algar. He has a previous win in the series. It came on a dirt racetrack, though, a year ago in Springfield. He's looking for his first ever win on pavement in the Arca Remax series. Just behind him, Brian Clawson in the number 40. Two runner up finishes already this year. Just 18 years old. Clawson looking for his first ever win in the Arkham Remax.
Tag Series. Dominic Casola with a great run. This is a career run for Dominic Casola here in the Arc Remix Series. He's running third right now. Josh Weiser, pole sitter, all the way up to fourth with some damage. Involved in the accident that brought out our red flag. And right behind them, the 11 of Brian Silas. And second in points and sixth on the racetrack, the number two of Michael McDowell. Onto the front stretch, green flag back in the air. We're racing at Gateway once again. 20 laps to go. Josh Wise looks to the inside of Dominic Casola. That's a battle for the third spot. Josh dropping in behind Dominic Casola now, down the back stretch. Aaron Crocker in the number 98, a lap down car. Involved in an accident earlier. This is for fifth. The pass by Michael McDowell looking to the inside of the 11 of Brian Silas. Not quite able to clear Brian. Brian's going to fight back on the outside. Now Michael McDowell does make the pass. Takes over fifth. Michael McDowell was leading the race when the fifth caution came out on lap 84. They decided that they needed to come in for fuel, so he gave up the lead. Restarted in the 11th position. He's made his way back up to fifth now. Brian Clawson had a peek at the inside of Justin Algar. That is a battle for the lead. Algar now with two car lengths over the 40 of Brian Clawson as they go by the start finish line. Clawson looks like he's getting into the corners a bit better than Justin Algar. Real strong getting in. Justin's running a little bit higher line right there. Keeps that momentum up as he goes down the back stretch. But Brian Clawson looking to the inside now, side by side for the lead. It is able to clear him. Use that Ernie Elliott horsepower to clear the 16 of Justin Algar, a new leader. Brian Clawson out in front of the field now. Justin Algar running second, Dominic Casola third, Josh Wise, and Michael McDowell round out your top five. Remember that 22 of Josh Wise and the two of Michael McDowell, our teammates. They finished 1-2 at Pocono just a few weeks ago. Down the back stretch, Ryan Clawson now with a clean racetrack in front of him. There's those teammates you were talking about, Josh Wise, Michael McDowell. That 14 of Brett Rowe that was making such a good run. He's out there road with an unscheduled pit stop. Looking back from Brian Silas is on board to Colin Brown in that number 99, the Roush Fenway development driver. That's Michael Annette, the 32 car peaking to the inside. Michael McDowell looks to the inside of his teammate, Josh Wise. Josh Wise pulling away from Michael McDowell. Ray Dunlap, what are they talking about? Well, as you're talking about these guys being team cars, realize both of these cars at one time were Dodge Chargers. Now, the 22 is actually a Toyota now, but that's basically just because they reskinned it and changed it over to a Toyota. Now, we're talking about a couple of different cars here. This is 507, the chassis number on the number 22 car, and Michael McDowell is driving chassis number 615. This is a car that he's used to go to Victory Lane already this year, and they believe they've still got enough time to get the front, but what he really is concentrating on right now is trying to get by his teammate, Josh wise the laps are winding down if he's trying to get to the front he's having to work awfully hard to get past fourth right now and Michael's being shown as he looks to the inside of his teammate Josh wise he's less than two seconds behind if he can get by his teammate fairly quickly and move up and get by those other cars he may have oh got sideways over in turn two a little bit loose there for Michael McDowell as he was Really trying to cut the corner very tight, and he lost a lot of ground on his teammate Josh Wise. Justin Algar continues to run in the second position. Dominic Casola running third. Remember, Pocono, he finished eighth just a few weeks ago. His best career finish in the Arca Remax series. Looking to improve on that tonight. Again, this is for second. Justin Algar holding on to the number two position and the one of Dominic Casola right on his back bumper. And you can't count out that 22 of Josh Wise. Josh Wise involved in an accident earlier, penalized for coming onto Pitt Road. 
had to start at the back of the longest line and now already up into the fourth position. Meanwhile, Frank Kimmel has made his way by a few cars. He's up at the 12th position. So we look at Michael McDowell going to make it three wide. McDowell looking to the inside of his teammates again. And three wide just isn't going to work. Dominic Casola gets pushed completely out of the line. And here comes the 22 of Josh Wise once again. He doesn't give up the position to McDowell. Michael had to get in that corner so hard and was at a bad angle being on the inside that it forced him up the hill. Josh Wise was able to make the turn underneath him and beat him off turn number two. Laps are winding down. McDowell trying everything he can to get by that 22. Right. Lots of traffic here between the two spotters telling each other that they need to get that two in front. Sort of a team program here, but they want to know that Josh Wise, they're trying to tell Josh Wise that the two is three tenths faster and to give him up the position. Josh came back on the radio and said, I'll give it to him if he earns it. Yeah, I agree. I agree with Josh Wise. He's racing right here for the second position. No way, there's no way I would just back off and let, ooh, Justin Algar is going to fight back on the bottom of the racetrack, not quite able to make the pass there. Josh Weiss takes second away from Justin Algar. Here comes the two of Michael McDowell. That is for third. He will take the position away from Algar. And now the two teammates working their way up towards the 40 of Brian Clawson. About a second and a half lead right there for Brian Clawson. As they go down the back stretch, inside of 10 laps of racing to go, Josh Wise, Michael McDowell running second and third, Brian Clawson leading this field, like you mentioned, about a second and a half in front of them. Remember at Pocono, the two of Michael McDowell got by the 22 of Josh Wise. At that time, it was a battle for the second position. And then when Jeremy Clements ran out of fuel coming off turn number three, the final corner, that was for the victory. So, no, Josh Wise really beat himself up, beat himself up over allowing his teammate to get by here. It cost him a shot at winning this race. Josh that race. Wise and Michael McDowell running second and third. Last time by just a second separated them and Brian Clawson. So they're working together and working closer to the 40. Let's take a look at their speeds now compared to our leader. You see Josh Wise about a mile and a half an hour faster than Brian Clawson that right that lap. And the same thing for Michael McDowell. They run it just a move. Michael gets a good run on the bottom. Josh Wise moved up the racetrack. Michael McDowell on the inside. Can he make the pass? No, he's not going to be able to make it. Slow race car on the back stretch, and it's not going to be able to make it in. It looked like it was that 93 of Julian Pinarus. Let's see what the gap is when they get to the start finish line. There's Julian Pinarus, and it looks as though he's still rolling on that access road. I don't know if they'll throw the caution or not. About a four-tenth of a second gain that time for Brian Clawson because of this hard battle for the second position. Brian Clawson, as he looks at his rearview mirror, sees these two battle side by side and is ecstatic, knowing that he can run faster in the clean air in front of him. There goes Clawson. Here comes Josh Wise, and there goes Michael McDowell. One, two, three, let's see what the gap is right there for Brian Clawson. Even open it up a little bit more, about two tenths of a second faster that time than the 22 of Josh Wise. Brian Clawson up on the wheel. He ran his fastest lap on lap 113. So one lap ago was the fastest lap of the race for Brian Clawson. Ray Dunlap. Michael McDowell just lost fourth gear. Fourth gear went out of his transmission. He has had to shift to third. Can the engine make it that far, Phil, if he's got to run this thing in third gear? Yeah, I think he just needs to back off a little bit early. You know, there's not a big gap between third and fourth gear. It's just maybe a few hundred more RPM, but he probably needs to back off early. He's got a little bit of a cushion on the fourth place car right now of Justin Algar. He does not want to lose this engine this close to gaining some points on Frank Kimmel. There's the point standings as they run. Frank Kimmel with a 45 point lead over Michael McDowell. So McDowell chipping away. That would be a 50 point gain for McDowell here tonight. Five laps to go inside of five laps to go coming down for four laps to go. This time by Brian Clawson in front of the field at Gateway. He leads Josh Wise by just over one second. The 
Does Josh Wise have enough time? Well, he just made up about four tenths of a second on Brian Clausen. If he can do that three more laps, he will be right on his back bumper. There they are right there, three and a half laps to go. Josh Wise focusing on the back bumper of that 40 of Brian Clausen. Michael McDowell still holding on to third, but as Ray had mentioned, doesn't have fourth gear anymore. So really not in contention to catch his teammate, the 22 of Josh Wise. Yeah, Michael just needs to back off there, try to hold the third position if he can, try to keep the 16 of Justin Algar behind him. But meanwhile, Josh Wise tries to chase down the 40 of Brian Clausen. Brian Clausen, Josh Wise, one and two. The last time by, it was just over a second that separated the two. This time by, two laps of racing to go from Gateway International Raceway. 2.5 miles remaining. That time, under one second, the difference between the two. Ryan Clawson keeping that car right on the bottom. Josh Wise running a little bit higher. Half a lap to go for Brian Clawson. One and a half laps to go, I'm sorry, for Brian Clawson. That's a big area of space between Brian Clawson and Josh Wise. And this time by, he's going to see the white flag. It will be one and a quarter miles to go before his first win in the ARCA Remax Series. They have a few lap cars in front of him. They may come into play here. A little smoke coming out of the right rear as he got into the brake a little hard coming into turn one. Now a straightaway. Down the back stretch, Brian Clawson looking for his first win. Four previous races for Brian Clawson in the ARCA Remax Series has netted him three top fives. His career best, he did twice. The first one was at Lakeland, the second one at Nashville. Coming out of turn number four, checkered flag will fly. It is the 40 of Brian Clawson, your winner. Three wide as they come across the start finish line. They're battling for six. Michael Annette gets the spot. Andy Lally seventh. Justin Marks in eight. How about that, Phil? What a nice job by Brian Clawson for first ever ARCA Remax win. Josh Wise, great run again. Another second place finish for him. And Michael McDowell's going to gain some points. Frank ended up finishing 12th. Michael McDowell third. It's our 13th different winner in 18 races this season in the ARCA Remax Series. And this time, it's that Memorex Dodge Charger of Brian Clausen. He will be your victor at Gateway International Raceway. His celebration begins. His team's going to join him on the racetrack. There you see the unofficial top 10 from Gateway. First ever celebration for Brian Clausen in that number 40. Winning his first ARCA Remax Series race here in the Gateway ARCA 150. Not a bad burnout there for <laughs> a young man. Is the car there somewhere? It is. You know, all this, take a look at our results. The top 10, Brian Clausen, Josh Wise. With another impressive performance. Career best for Dominic Casola. Great run, finishes in the fifth position. Michael Annette, another top 10 in his third ever ARCA Remax start, finishes sixth. And Andy Lally. Gets another top 10 in this second ever race. Take a look here. Frank Kimmel coming home unofficially in the 12th spot. Earlier you saw Michael McDowell. Again, those two in a great points battle. McDowell finished third. Frank Kimmel coming home in 12th. Continue through the unofficial results. I see Dexter Bean back in the 33rd position. He got involved in an accident. Ryan Fisher, that spectacular accident, finishes yeah. in the 32nd position. And we're glad he is all right. Ray Dunlap, I believe you've caught up with McDowell. Well, I have, and he's climbed out of the car. Now, we heard you on the radio saying that you lost fourth gear. Was that the difference of not getting back to the front? Oh, yeah, no, absolutely. It was, uh, it, you know, at the end there, I was racing Josh real hard, and then uh, fourth gear went out, and all I had was third, so I couldn't really contend. But, you know, Eddie Sharp Racing and Z-Line Design Mission Residential gave us an awesome car tonight. Uh, you know, we got a little bit off on the strategy. We had to come from 11th there to the front, and um, we were we were definitely the car to beat. We just needed track position, and uh, when I got behind my teammate, it was just, you know, it was a uh, good hard racing, but, uh, you know, we got held up a little bit too long, and then fourth gear broke. So, you know, luckily we were able to hang on to the end and, and get a good point stay, and, uh, you know, we led a lot of laps, and I think we led the most, so that gains us five bonus points, and we're just running Frank down in this championship, trying to win this thing. Four races in 12 days. This is a pretty crazy stretch. Oh, it's great. You know, it's, it's a lot of fun for the drivers. It's hard on the crews. 
but uh, you know we're, we're prepared for this. It's something we've been working on for the last four or five weeks to get all our cars ready to go so that uh, we, we can take the fight to Frank. All right, well, let's get Josh Wise in here real quick. Josh, great run tonight and a teammate battle there. You guys really had some hard-fought racing. Oh, it was fun, man. We were, we, uh, you know, we got our, our pit sequence got a little messed up because of the, uh, the wreck we got caught up in over there on the back stretch. So we were on a lot older tires there at the end that we, than we wanted to be. And, uh, and uh, Eddie's up there spotting the owner, and he's telling me Michael's coming over fresh tires. And I'm like, well, I want to win this thing too. So uh, we kept racing, but uh, everyone did an awesome job. Wayne Carroll, my new crew chief, I was, it was a blast working with him. And uh, Eddie Sharp spotting for me. And uh, I got to thank Nap Auto Parts and everyone at Michael Walter Racing for, uh, for all their support and everything. All right, great run for Josh Wise. Now let's get to Victor Lane, another first-time winner in the ARCA Remax Series. And Brian Clawson unstrapping from the interior of his race car. He's already done the burnout. He's pulled into pit road. His crew now trying to help him with a radio cord. Forgot to jump in here. Brian finished second in two other starts this year and a fifth and a 14th. And I'm telling you, this kid is all excited. The hands are shaking. The helmet is coming off. And after serious neck injuries last fall, who'd have thunk he'd be in victory lane in the Arca Remax Series? Brian Clawson, congrats, man. Stay right where you are, buddy. Well-earned victory. Got the Hans device clips going off of here. And, uh, Brian, tell us about the pass on Justin and this win. Uh, you know, we uh, we kind of gave up the lead there on the restart to him. Uh, just uh, didn't quite get through the gears as good as he did. And, uh, you know, so I was bound to determine to get these guys back, uh, you know, where they deserve. They gave me a great car all night. Uh, you know, Matt Chambers made a great call uh, on the pit strategy there, getting us in early, and it allowed us to be out the front there at the end. Great track position. And, uh, you know, it's just uh, good. We've been so close with this uh, Memorex Dodge so many times here um, that we've ran the ARCA Remax Series, and uh, you know, it's good to finally give these guys what they deserve. Calm, cool, and collected. The party will begin when he climbs out, guys. Brian Clausen getting in victory lane here for the first time in his career. And he's going to have to unstrap and... I'm sure that his team is waiting for him to climb out so they can celebrate with him. Take a look at these points as we have finished our 18th of the 23 races. Just 40 points now separating Kimmel and McDowell. Yeah, we've got a great point battle coming up, and we've got a race on Monday on the dirt at DeCoin, and then another race back next Saturday in Chicago. It was a very exciting race here at Gateway. We had some exciting accidents that took place, but it was Frank Clausen winning. The pressure cooker is about to pop. NASCAR Bush Series qualifying at the California Speedway culminates a long, hot day in the shadows of the hills of Hollywood. 42 cars set to qualify here around this two-mile facility just outside of Los Angeles, California. Take a look at the NASCAR Bush Series point standings. A runaway. Carl Edwards kicking butt here over David Rudum in a 690-point lead, but the battle is for the owner's standings. Take a look at that. Carl Edwards leads by only 42 points over the 29 for Richard Childress Racing, and that has been a heated battle that's gone back and forth for the past several weeks. Hello, everybody. I'm Bob Dillner. Alongside of me, Jimmy Spencer and Hermie Sadler. And, Jimmy, let's talk about this owner's championship battle right now going back and forth how prestigious is that for the owners it's a lot it's there's a lot to be said a lot of bragging rights but probably last week the 29 holiday in car was leading the points and, car, and he has a bad race with the 60 i'm sorry with the 60 having a good race but they wreck with a lap car harmony so you know these owners they have a lot on the line because hey let's face it they have hundreds of employees even though they switch drivers they want to win that bragging right i was gonna tell you that's one of the cool things about that 29 car is the fact that they've done it with several different drivers and being a driver you know how important it is for that driver crew chief relationship so it goes back to show the depth of Richard Childress Racing that they can put different drivers in there and still have that kind of success. You know I think week after week the Childress organization and especially in the bush very strong but the surprise to them t to today is going to be what will the Toyota team do of the 10 and Vickers. Guys, one more thing we want to talk about here. Qualifying very important at the California Speedway. In fact, half of the winners here co have come from a top five starting spot. Why? Well, I think the big thing is, Hermie, you've been in this situation. You don't get to change your car in the Bush Series. You're locked in. Whatever you decide to use today in qualifying, you will have to use in the race tomorrow. And this is tougher for these guys, even for the 
in the Bush Series qualifying than it is for the Cup guys because to have a good car on long runs, Jimmy, as you know, you got to have it good and free to keep it turning all night. Well, when you put tape on it, pump the tires up, you automatically get loose. So these guys are going to have their hands full for two laps today to have a good car for tomorrow night. It'll be a 300-mile race here tomorrow night at the California Speedway, but two laps nitty gritty nerve wracking all sorts of stuff going around the racetrack here for all these drivers there is carl edwards machine here at the california speedway he's one of the soonest guys to go out during qualifying <laughs> 